Please. Hey, boss babes. Welcome to Boss Please, a fabulously femme-powered podcast for inspiration seekers and girl bosses alike. Need a confidence boost, vent sesh, or someone to co-sign the inevitable pity party? We got you through every peak and pit. After all, being a boss is hardly easy. Bringing real stories, tips, and tricks is what we're setting out to do, alongside some amazing female bosses in their respective fields. Our Lady Collective is fairly diverse, and we wanted to share a little bit about ourselves for our first episode. All right, so this is Jill. I'm here with Melinda and Megan. What up? Hey, guys. And we really want to get to know you, but I feel like you need to get to know us. So in every episode, we're going to talk about how we were a boss this week. And hopefully that gives you a good sense of who we are, what Mm -hmm. we accomplish, our vibe. Don't you girls think? Totally. Absolutely. Okay, so Melinda, how were you a boss this week? I'm really big on to-do lists, Mm -hmm. but I never actually check anything (laughs) off. (laughs) Even though I'm a boss, but like I get distracted very easily. Like if I'll start, like for example, my company website, I'll be like, oh, I have to update this artist's website. And I'm like, oh wait, I didn't do the song list for this artist's website. Oh, and then I, you know, I just go down this rabbit hole. I made a a to-do list of 25 things that I had to do that day. And I checked off every single one. Oh, yeah, girl. Get it. And my husband was like, you were so productive today. It felt very good. It does feel good. It does feel good to, like, write down. And as you're just checking things off, you're like, it's the checks. It is the checks. And the the actual, like, movement of making a check mark next Mm -hmm. to the sentence is, like, (laughs) it's so fulfilling. It's everything. It's literally everything. It's better than actually doing what you're doing Oh, 100 <laughs> percent and and you know when you put that check it's like purposeful and sometimes you'll write it off the paper because it's that absolutely much of a satisfaction so holla make a to-do list it Love helps it, it does what about you um so you guys i was a mega boss this week because um i finished writing a movie that i was writing with uh my friend Haley. Yeah. The Lifetime movie or it's, the Hallmark it's, movie? It's a made-for-TV movie, 100%, <laughs> okay. with all the cheese and all the I'm romance. So it's going to be so good. It's like it's definitely a Christmas movie, so hopefully next Christmas you guys will be seeing it on your you TV You know, Jillian screens. and I have kind of a guilty pleasure for those type of films. Oh, don't we all? <laughs> like, literally, we're the queens of trash. Mm-hmm. Like, I will watch a trashy movie and text Melinda and be like, girl, have watch you this. seen <laughs> Have you seen this trash? It is so good. Our Wait, her husband have... judges, my boyfriend judges. They can't enjoy it. We enjoy the finer things. You guys, I low-key feel left out. Have you guys been texting each other? Like, I thought we had a group text. Like, what do you mean you've been texting each other without me? I'll literally tag on... her. Yeah. You... I want to watch Trashy TV too. I'll tag her in a promo and I'm like, girl, like there's this movie that came out, Reality High. And, and she was like, this weekend. I, I was, was like, like, I'm on it. Make <laughs> some time, take some notes. We're going to talk about it. Let's dissect it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, okay, you know. Well, what add do now that we know? Thank yeah. you, please. I didn't, like, fill me in. Lovelies. I didn't know you liked the trash, too. Well, I don't consider, like, okay, maybe I'm it not is about ter- the trash. It is terrible. Oh, they're, it's, they're bad. Yeah, yeah, but they're so addicting. Like They are. Yeah. They Christmas, are. no, October comes around. I, my, my TV is always on Hallmark Channel. <laughs> And they come out with 20 new Christmas movies a year. And you best believe I will watch all of the new ones. It gives you enough to do for the whole month. I We're Absolutely. not alone in this. Well, 100%. We are not alone. Mega Boss, what is the working title of the film so we can watch out for it? Do you have a title yet? We do, but I don't know. Can I disclose it? I mean. Do you want to keep it a secret? I kind of want to keep it a secret. Okay. It's a wow. really great name, though. Keeping us in suspense, are we? Well, you guys were <laughs> texting behind my back, so <laughs> it's only fair. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I will tell you both this. If you have Netflix, make sure you watch Country Crush. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yeah, that's you. Melinda's new, like, current phase. Have you watched it yet? I haven't, oh but it's on the queue. It. Yeah, maybe this weekend. Does it have Country Boys in it? It's because going I'm to change your it. life. Oh, okay. That's all you I'm going to say. That, that's, what, <laughs> that's what I like to do when I'm not bossing. Although I still feel like, you know, watching a made-for-TV movie is bossing because I'm self-care. You Absolutely. know, it's all about the oh, self-care. 100%. Um, while you guys were more, yeah. like, business boss-related, my week was amazing because my apartment is clean. And I feel like because of my schedule, it is so nuts. I'm exhausted. I go to work really early in the morning. I come home, and I have zero motivation to do anything. And my apartment is clean. I, I don't know how it stayed this way, but it's been clean for a couple days. My boyfriend is a mess. 
Hopefully he doesn't listen to this. He probably will. He's gonna <laughs> um, he is a stupid mess. Um, so it's just been like really exciting to come home and see things how I've left it because he's been really busy with work. So he hasn't really been here. Of course. So it's kind of just like the most amazing <laughs> That's feeling. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, I was a boss because I maintained my business boss yes. and then my personal boss. Yes, girl. Uh, so get it. let's get into some real talk okay. because we all want to learn a little bit more about each other. A defining moment in your career so far when you really felt like you were a boss with a capital B. Oh, heck yeah. What about you, Meg? Okay, so for me, moved to LA with a dream. A dream to be on network television. Didn't know how it was going to happen, but just, you know, going for the dream. And so some of you may know I was on the Pretty Little Liars after show on the stream with three of my other girlfriends. And, you know, it kind of got popular. We weren't really getting paid that much for it. It was just kind of a fun thing that we did. And then, you know, I thought, why not have this on Freeform or then ABC Family, the actual network that Pretty Little Liars is shown on. It could be kind of like a Talking Dead after what they show after The Walking Dead. So um, long story short, I had this idea. I emailed my agent and I pitched it to him and he had the contacts and he ended up getting us a meeting at Freeform. And we went in and, you know, we were just a bunch of small town girls with this big dream of hoping that Freeform would just listen to us and listen to our pitch and, and get us on air. And it, I make it sound easier than it was. I mean, it was a very stressful couple months of like <laughs> back and forth. But lo and behold, we actually uh, got to shoot the Pretty Little Liar super fan suite on network television and got to interview a bunch of the cast members um, all leading up to a couple of finales that they had for an all-day marathon. So I was like, so awesome. It's you amazing. know, it was kind of like a, if I can if I can do this, think of what everyone else out there with a the dream can do right. when they stop waiting for someone else to open the door for them and they just bust open that door themselves. That's what you have to do. It's huge. Mm -hmm. it's a huge accomplishment, Megan. Thank you, really. loves. Thank you. Well, Absolutely. you inspired me, Meg, because Thanks. I was living at home in Jersey before I made the move to L.A. And I remember seeing Megan on TV. And at the time, I was nannying, so I was home. And I remember texting her and being like, Oh my God, <laughs> girl. And then I wanted to know everything that was going on in your life. And I feel like in a way that kind of like made us reconnect totally. from when we knew each other in college. So I'm grateful for that after oh. show. Um, but I would say that my sort of defining boss moment would be the move to LA. Mm -hmm. None of my friends or family had ever even thought about moving this far away. It's across the country. You know, I don't have any family out here. I barely had any friends out here. And I made that move. And I remember thinking in the back of my head, like, I only saved up a certain amount of money. And I'm like, I need to make this happen for myself. So I stayed with a friend the first uh, couple of days, found my apartment in two days, signed the lease, got the keys, got my furniture. Like, if that's not Boston, that's I don't know what is. Right? Yeah. Adulting at its finest yeah. right? right there. <laughs> I just, like, made it work, and I was, like, terrified. But you sort of just, like, have to work through the fear, and that is just, like, in all aspects of life. Um, but I did that, and then I ended up getting a job at um, the website Perez Hilton, like, literally a month after I moved. So I'm one of those pinch me success stories. Yeah. I feel like... Because I know a lot of people that move out here and they don't get to sort of achieve what they set out to do or they're actually still working on it. And I am still working on my dreams, obviously, but that was like a huge hurdle for me to get a job with this, you know, company that everyone knows the name and you're working in celebrity news and that's your dream and it's awesome. So that for me was like defining and I still can like think to this day about where I was when I found out and how excited I was. Oh, and awesome. I hope never to be jaded enough to lose that feeling. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah. I love that that yeah. is That's, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Melinda? There are a few that I can think of, but I, because I could easily say like, oh, owning a business or you know, having my career and everything. But I think the moment in my life where I was most boss was when I moved to Chicago to be with my husband because he was going to law school there and I had no friends. It was freezing. I moved in January. I don't recommend doing that. Um, and I didn't have any career connections. I knew nothing about Chicago. I'd actually never even been to the city before. But I moved there in January to support him. And we had just gotten married, and I was very depressed. I didn't even leave the apartment for like two months. But what made the situation boss for me is because after those two months, I was like, Melinda, 
Like, you need to get out of this apartment. You need to figure out what the city has to offer you. Like, this isn't who you are. Mm -hmm. And by the time I left Chicago, I had a larger fan base that I had had in my years of even having a career. I go back to Chicago often. I booked a national print ad with CoverGirl. My Black is Beautiful. Heck yeah, I you was did. in Dream Girls. I, you know, I did an independent film. I did some commercials. So I think what made me a boss was figuring out how to find positivity in what I viewed as a negative situation and becoming a self-starter and just learning how to create opportunities for myself out of having nothing. Yeah. Because I was in a place that I knew nothing about and had no friends, had nobody there to support me. And it's easy when you move to a city if you have friends, like you had Megan when you moved out here. So you had some sort of support system, but I had a husband that was in law school all day. So I was literally <laughs> totally, by myself. Totally. So that was, I think that was a defining moment for me because I became a boss in that sense. Totally. Yeah. And isn't it crazy how the world works where the universe was actually pushing you there so you could engage and like make your fan base wider yes. than it was yeah. in just the LA area. Yeah, for sure. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm grateful for those moments, absolutely. Yeah. Well, those stories are just a snippet of what you're going to hear on this podcast. The three mm-hmm. of us came together sort of serendipitously, <laughs> not realizing that we were all big bosses yeah. in our yeah. in our own life. And yeah. somehow we're, you know, we've we've fallen in love. Uh, and we're going to bring you guys some amazing content, some amazing, inspiring females. I am just, I am proud to know you guys. Aww. And I'm excited. And this is yeah. going to be awesome. And I'm excited for you listeners because chances are you clicked on this this uh, link and that means you're a boss too. Mm-hmm. And so from one boss to another, thank you for listening. We're going to bring you a great season. And um, may the boss be with you. <laughs> Trying to I think love of that. Something. I actually love that, Megan. Oh my! <laughs> can I like? I don't think I can patent that because it's technically not all mine. Because, uh, but we're gonna use that. Now. I think well, that needs to go on a mm-hmm. T-shirt. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Mike, drop Meg. Yes. Thanks, guys. <laughs> all right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Boss Please Pod, and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe on iTunes. Navigate the path to your best self with us, because bossing together is always better.